308 battle rifles. They are so fucking cool. And what if I told you that you could earn an airsoft version for less than 150 quid? You'd call me crazy, wouldn't you? No, those are fucking premium guns. You're not going to get a 308 battle rifle for under 150 quid. Yes, you are. You can get a Jingong G3 A3. And I'm here to talk about it. But before I do, I'm going to talk about this channel sponsor. This channel sponsor is Raid Shadow Let. Oh, I'm just joking. There are no sponsors, which will mean two things. One, that the production value on this video is going to be kind of shit. But two, it means you're going to get a completely honest opinion all the time out of me. So if you like honest opinions, which is very rare on YouTube, why not consider subscribing to my channel? So, the Jingong G3 A3. A replica 308 battle rifle. And how sexy is it? It's very nice. And you get a lot of bang for your buck. For, like I say, less than £150, you get the replica, you get a 300 round high cap mag, you get a battery and charger all included. Sounds like the bargain of the century, doesn't it? Well, there have been some sacrifices made to get that price point, and I'm going to talk about them right now. So, let's get it out of the way first. This gun is almost entirely plastic, and I'm not talking about polymer. No, I'm talking about plastic. This is fucking Mattel Hasbro Barbie doll plastic that you've got right here. Every time you shoulder the gun and you hold it, you can feel that plastic. You can probably hear the creaking right now, and you get reminded all the time that you're carrying a toy. Um, I wouldn't want to run into a tree using this. I wouldn't want to drop this because I'm very worried that it might break. Okay, um, that's a downside, I know, but it does mean that the gun is incredibly light. So even though it's really huge, you could run this all day and you're not gonna break a sweat, which is great for fat people like me and great for you know younger players and smaller people that might have an issue with that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, there are silver linings to this. Um, it's not all doom and gloom, although most of it is plastic. You get a metal rear sight, you get a metal selector switch, mag release, trigger, um, outer barrel, front sight. You know, there are a few metal pieces out of it. Um, now, I'm going to get this out of the way as well. You don't get this collapsible stock. This is something I added extra on mine. The original stock that you get is this one here, which is, again, pretty much all plastic. Uh, but you've got a rubberized pad and you've got absolutely tons of battery space. You also get nice cool little features like a working cocking handle. When you pull that back, it exposes the hop unit there. Okay, I'm not going to HK slap it because like I say, this thing is almost entirely plastic. And I'm worried that if I were to do that and it would fly forward, it might break off and keep going. You know what I mean? So we definitely don't want that. When you get this gun, there are no rails on it at all. You can't mount anything on the front. You can't mount anything on the top. This is something that I had to purchase separately. This is actually a MP5 rail, which is all MP5 rails are completely compatible with um, G3. So that is a plus as well. So you do have the option to add optics onto this gun if you really wanted to, but that's about it. You're not gonna get any sort of grips any sort of flashlights or anything like that you'll have to use duct tape if you want to attach accessories in the front of this gun it ain't happening um, another weird thing about this gun is the old school ergonomics the actual real steel g3 was designed in the 1950s and it shows this pistol grip for example feels simultaneously too big and too small what do I mean by that? Well, if I was to put my mitts on it like this, now I don't feel like I've got small hands. I might do that. Said I had small hands. They're not small, are they? I never heard, I never heard that one before. Um, it feels kind of thick, you know, um, kind of chunky, like I'm holding a Coke can or something. But then also, it feels too shallow and too small. I feel like my hand is too long for it down there. So it does kind of feel weird and it does take some getting used to. Another weird thing is, although you've got the mag release right there, they decided to put an AR style mag release. Why though? Unless you are Andre the Giant, you are not hitting that mag release with your index finger. 
you have to release it from the pistol grip to actually reach it. Very silly design. I have no idea what they were thinking. However, one thing I do like about old school ergonomics is this very slim front grip and it's very, very stylish in my opinion and just so aesthetically pleasing, let's say. I really do enjoy that. Um, speaking of aesthetics, and I mentioned it earlier, I did put this stock on there. Now you might be thinking, why the hell would I swap it out from the original stock? Well, just the vibes. I love this collapsible stock that you can get for the G3. Uh, they're hard to find, I'll be honest. I had to get this imported uh, from God knows where. Um, but now that it's on, I'm really happy with it. Another downside though is that it doesn't have any sort of battery space. Oh no, what's a guy to do? Well, um, you might be also thinking, where's this bungee coming from? This is my battery now. What I did with it was I um, got a, a external pouch that I found on AliExpress uh, to fit the battery. And then I ran the wires through a cut into the receiver. One positive about plastic, it's easy to cut into it. Uh, I cut into the receiver and I've got the wires sticking out there. So uh, the reason why I wanted the um, connector externally was if I wanted to detach it, I could do so very easily. Just like that. Um, it doesn't look nice. No, it doesn't. Uh, is it practical? Not really, but I really wanted that collapsible stock on it. And unlike some models, there's no space to run the battery in this top bit here above the gearbox. Speaking of gearbox, although the externals are completely plastic, the gearbox that you get with this is actually very, very reliable. Now I've been using this gun for on and off about a year, not too much use I'll be honest, but um, the full metal gearbox with full metal gears, um, is very reliable it's not broken on me i've had no issues with it at all um, so as long as you look after it and use um, lower powered uh, batteries like for example i've used a 7.4 volt battery in this um, it should last you a hell of a long time um, a great thing about the internals as well is the performance of the gun you've got a great um hop unit in there. I've ran 0.3 gram BBs and it'll hop them just fine. It's a rotary hop unit, which is very rare for older type of guns like this. Um, so you can get really precise kind of measurements. And I'll tell you what, they stay in place as well. Some hop units that I use kind of move out of place over time. This one, as soon as you uh, got it as where you want it, it will not move. Um, and you've got an extremely long inner barrel, which is I think um, 469 millimeters very very nice it doesn't give you range the range comes from the hop but the accuracy that it gives you from that barrel is really good yeah. what you're seeing is advanced warfare now i want to talk about the magazines for a bit they're big they're chunky okay and they're hard to find so although you've got 500 rounds with this, that'll last you a long time. It is a high cap, it's gonna rattle. And one day you're gonna to wanna to swap it out for mid caps. What do you do? Now luckily, um, all G3 magazines, as far as I can tell, will work in the Jingong. So Classic Army will work, Token Ru will work, LCT, uh, King Arms, all those magazines will work. There's just a bugger to find. What I've gone for is the Tokyo Marui mid caps. Now, they're only about 70 rounds, but they're full metal, they're really nice quality, they feed perfectly, and you can get them for about 10 or 12 pounds brand new, uh, which is a steal. The only other option that I can see, that I can find, um, with that is always in stock, are the LCT magazines, but they're about 25 quid, so I don't know. One downside to the magazines as well is that they are quite large, obviously, and you're gonna want to get some pouches for it, what do you do? I personally use the front pouches that are in my um, chest rig and they just about fit in there okay. But one uh, hack that I've found is that if you get a M4 taco pouch, the bungee will actually stretch and accommodate those magazines pretty well and retain them quite well. So if you've got some of them lying around, you're in luck. You can use them and you'll be absolutely fine. 
So with that all said, would I recommend the Jingong G3? Well, if you can get over the shitty externals, it is actually a fantastic gun for the price. You get something that's different. It's not just another M4. You get something that you could upgrade very easily. You get something that performs really well out of the box and for a really low price. So I'd absolutely recommend this gun. So guys, I ain't got much more to say about it. Uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. God bless. <laughs> Leaving that in.